own soul's sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. See, Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this bite. Right? Zephaniah. Zephaniah 1. Let's start it up. Uh, let's start at verse 14. Hold on, Sadam. You gotta hear this. I don't think you ever heard this before. I'm gonna go all I'm gonna go to the Old Testament and I'm gonna bring it to the New Testament to show you saying the same thing. Read that, verse 14. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. Matter of fact, start at verse 12. Start at verse 12. Verse 12. And it shall come to pass. Now that's a prophecy. Anytime the Bible says it shall come to pass, that means it's a prophecy. That means it's something that's gonna happen in the future. Go ahead. At that time. That I will search Jerusalem with candles. And by Jerusalem, he's talking about the people. Israel, the Israelites are called Jerusalem. So he's gonna search it with candles. Now think about this, right? Think about your power going out, Tony, right? And you light up them candles. And you looking for something with the candle, right? Don't you the, it ain't that the candlelight ain't that bright, right? So you gotta look very closely. But what he's searching for and looking for is our sins that we've been committing. Go ahead. And punish the men that are settled on their leaves. He said he's going to punish the men and the women, it's just in masculine form, that are settled on their leaves. What settled on their leaves means is the people who have become complacent in their sin. The people that's like, man, God ain't going to do nothing. Eh? I've been doing this this long and ain't nothing happened. It's going to say that. Watch this. That say in their heart, that say in their heart, according to the Bible, the heart is the mind. That say in their mind what? The Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. That's, oh my gosh. So if I'm saying, you know what that's like? You got kids? You got kids? So if you tell your kids to do something, right? And they sitting at home and they like, man, I ain't doing that. Mama ain't gonna do nothing when she get home. <laughs> she ain't gonna do nothing good. She ain't gonna do nothing evil. What she's saying is, she ain't gonna do nothing at all. Pop ain't gonna do nothing. I ain't doing so. That's what our people are saying. We become complacent in our sin, and we're like, man, God ain't gonna do nothing. Read on. Therefore, their goods shall become a booty. It says, therefore, their goods. Meaning, what's your goods? Your money, your clothes, your food, your your house, your businesses, your car. It says, be, shall become a booty. Meaning what? It means a booty is. When other people come and take your stuff. You ever heard of like pirate booty? Okay. That means that somebody's going to come and they're going to take everything that you have. Okay. Your stuff, your possessions are going to become a spoil to the other nations. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. And their houses a desolation. Oh, 100%. That's why we read it. It's happened. Why you, what you think all this was? All these stores. Yes. Making other countries rich. Yes. 100%. He said all of these stores, all the people, all these other nations owning businesses in our neighborhood, and we're making them rich. What are we doing? We're taking our hard-earned little dollars, and we're giving it to the other nations, and they're taking it right up out of here, back to, back to Cockeysville, back to Timonium, back to, okay, back to the nice areas. Korea, China, Russia, everywhere. Uh, 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 Arabia. Right. Right. Exactly. You know. That's what they do with the nail shops and the hair salon. That's what they do. That's what they do. Yep. Go ahead. Read on. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. It says our people also going to build houses, but we ain't going to live in them. Now that's twofold. We built the White House. Do our people live in it? You know that slave labor to build the White House? But it's also going into you going to work for these companies. But 
you're not going to reap the real benefits from them. You're not going to have no part in the ownership of it. You're going to build up their houses, but you're not going to benefit from it. You're going to get just enough to sustain you, just like in slavery. We had just enough to sustain our lives. Most of the time, we working from a deficit. You know what I'm saying? Read on. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. It says we don't go plant vineyards and not drink the wine of. Now, look at this. Look at this sign, right? Who did it say these people are? Here's a car, right? The Mexicans. Hey, don't they do a lot of... You ever been to California? Mm -hmm. They drink like crazy. They sell yeah. it. They selling the fruit on the side of the highway. They doing all. They working in the vineyards. Mm -hmm. These are the people that's planting the vineyards and doing all of that hard work. Mm -hmm. Think about us in slavery. Okay, we was plant. We planting all that cotton. Mm -hmm. Was we reaping the benefits of it? No. Nothing. No. But well, they get a little bit of this. They get paid. We get just we enough. Got nothing. Meaning we doing all the agricultural work too, but we're not reaping the benefits for it, from it. Do you know that Maryland got? You know what Maryland got rich on? Um, a lot of slavery in Maryland. It was a lot of slavery in Maryland. Tobacco. Tobacco was the cash crop of Maryland. What, and it's the hardest thing to grow. That's the hardest physical labor you're going to ever do is trying to grow tobacco. That's what Maryland got rich on. Okay? Yes. Right. Read. The great day of the Lord is near. Now, this is what we want to talk about. That great day of the Lord. The day that Christ come back. Okay, watch this, what it says it say, What it says about the day of the Lord. Because a lot of our people go, I can't wait for Christ to come back. That, I don't know if you really mean that. Okay, the prophets, one of the prophets said, I don't even want to be alive in that day, it's so terrible. He said, I, I, wish, I wish to be dead in that day. I don't want to see it, I don't want to be here. Why? Watch, let's read about it. It is near, and haste it greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. That means it's close. The day of the Lord is sooner than we think it is. Read. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. It says the mighty man, meaning the ones that are high up. They got all the money. They got all the power. It says in that day, they're going to cry bitterly. Okay, go ahead. That day is a day of wrath. It says the day of the Lord is a day of wrath. Okay, now he ain't coming back. Fire. Giving out no Hershey's kisses and Fire. riding in on a rainbow colored horse. Fire. Okay, that that's 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 foolishness. All them pictures you see of him coming out the sky, he on a white horse with blonde flowing hair and blue eyes. Okay, no. This is gonna tell you what the Lord day of the Lord is. Go ahead. A day of trouble and distress. They say it's a day of trouble and distress. I Meaning people are gonna be stressed out and they ain't gonna know what to do. Go ahead. A day of wasteness and desolation. A day of wasteness and and desolation. Hold that. Don't. I must come right back to that. Give me Isaiah 54 and 16. Why does it say wasteness and desolation? The wasteness is talking about this place is going to be laid a made a wasteland. Okay. And desolate means when something is desolate, that's like you ride through here. You ever see I Am Legend? When he came, like the whole city was desolate. It was no people there no more. All of the windows and the building, the, the windows was blown out the buildings. The buildings was all burned up. That's a desolation. Okay, watch this. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 16. This is what's going to do it. What's going to cause that desolation. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coal. So God says, I have created the smith. What's a smith? I'm going to help you out. Blacksmith. God. It says, I created the, black, the blacksmith that bloweth the coals. You say guns? A blacksmith is somebody who works with metal, who makes weapons of war. So in this day and age, that would be our scientists creating these different these missiles and all of this stuff like that. The tanks, all of that type of stuff, okay? But he says that he created that. Okay, go ahead. In the fire, and that bloweth forth an instrument for his work. It says he brings forth an instrument for his work. This is talk going into ICBMs. It's going to intercontinental ballistic missiles. Okay, watch, watch this. And I have created the waster. The waster, that's the missile. That's what's going to cause the wasteland. There's nothing else that can hit and just destroys everything. Okay, go ahead. To destroy. He created that to destroy. And he's going to use it in the day of the Lord. When Christ comes back, he's going to use that in the day of destruction. Okay. That's right. Go back. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. No, go ahead. Verse 15. Uh -huh. That 
day is a day of wrath. A day of wrath. A day of trouble and distress. Trouble and distress. A day of wasteness and desolation. A day that all everything's gonna be burned up and destroyed. Go ahead. A day of darkness and gloominess. Darkness and gloom. This don't sound good. Like you brother, like brother Tony said, fire and brimstone. Darkness and gloominess. The day of the Lord is not a good day. It's gonna be a horrible day. Go ahead. A day of clouds and thick darkness. A clouds. day clouds and thick darkness. When a nuclear bomb hit, mm -hmm. what 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 comes up from the ground? Right. You get that mushroom cloud, yeah. and then you get all that nuclear fallout. Okay, all of that nuclear ash. Okay, darkness and gloominess. So much is gonna block out the sun. Okay, go ahead. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fence cities. A day of the trumpet and alarm. When you hear, when we heard that trumpet. During, the, during the, uh, the times, like in the Old Testament, they blew the trumpet to let people know that it was an invading army coming. So, the, like you ever heard of air raid, air raid siren? That is to do what? It's to warn the people. Same thing. It said that day is going to be the trumpet and the alarm. Go ahead. And against the high towers. Uh -huh. And I will bring distress upon men. He's going to bring distress upon men. Go ahead. That they shall walk like blind men. It says they shall walk like blind men. Goes right back to Deuteronomy 28. They shall grope at noonday. Okay? They shall grope at noonday. Meaning it's, it's bright sunny outside, but you can't see where you're going. Why? Because you don't have the laws of God. You're, not, you're, not, you're blinded with sin. Read on. Because they have sinned against the Lord. Exactly. Because they've sinned against the Lord. Read. And their blood shall be poured out as dust. And the flesh as the dung. That's heavy. Read that again. And their blood shall be poured out as dust. Their what? Shall be poured out as dust? Their blood. It says their blood shall be poured out as dust. And what? And their flesh as dung. You know what that means? That means it's going to be dead bodies everywhere. That's what that's going into. It's going to be dead bodies everywhere. Read. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. It says, and that silver and that gold that we cover so much, the money, it says, that's not going to be able to save us. It's not going to be able to keep us. So you might have a billion dollars in that day. And guess what? It ain't going to do nothing for you. Nothing. Go ahead. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. The whole land is that the end of the scripture? Go ahead. It says the whole land is gonna be devoured by that fire. The fire of it says the fire of his jealousy. Read. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. He killing everybody. He killing everybody. But guess who he not gonna kill? The ones who repent and keep his commandments. Y'all ever heard the song Swing Low, Sweet Chariot? Coming for the carry me home. That's what the Christians call the, uh, what do they call it, the, uh, the rapture. Meaning that when this destruction happened, the people who have repented and kept his commandments, guess what? He gonna come get them right before all that take place. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. He gonna take us up out of here right before he destroyed this place. It's like getting rescued from a burning building off the rooftop. The building already on fire. And just when you think you about to die, that hell of the helicopter come over and they throw the ladder down and pick you up off the top of the roof. You gonna, it says the righteous shall barely make it. Okay, that's why we gotta take this thing seriously. Give me, give me second Peter, uh three, give me three and ten. Second Peter three and ten. All right. All right, this is Gabby. It's, it's definitely good talking to you. You get a flyer? Yes, sir. You get both of them. One is the regular flyer, truth about slavery, and the other one is the Halloween flyer. Somebody gets this Gabby Halloween flyer. So with that is, that's going into all the origins and everything so we can learn. We need to learn where these pagan customs and these things come from. Yeah. Tony, let me get you one more scripture. Read this. Watch this. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. Uh -huh. But the day of the Lord. So we still talking about the day of the Lord. Go ahead. Which is what? Christ returning. No, we talking about Christ returning. This is the day of the Lord, right? This ain't, see, if you got the, the day of the Lord, you got the Lord's day. The Lord's day is the Sabbath. The day of the Lord is when he coming back putting, putting people to death. Go ahead. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So Tony, 
if you if you had a nice house, right, and you knew it was a chance somebody might break in, what would you do? Right. And you, if you knew when he was coming, you'd be sitting there waiting for him. Or you have some people waiting for him. But it says the man was Meaning, we don't know exactly when he coming. So we got to prepare ourselves now. Go ahead. In the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. Boom. That's the great noise. That's the nuclear missile hitting. It says the heavens going to pass away with a great noise. Go ahead. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The elements, meaning everything, that the, 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 the water, the air, steel, concrete, wood, everything. It says it's going to melt with fervent heat. Regular fire, you can drop fire on this ground right now. Ain't the concrete ain't burning. But nuclear fire, it burns hotter than any regular fire. It says everything going to be burned up. Go ahead. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. I ain't, the Bible said that, right? That ain't my words. The Bible said all this going to be burned up. Go ahead. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be? And so, whoa, 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 whoa. Can't speak past that. He says, so now that we understand that in the day of the Lord, our money can't save us. Now, it's not, it's not saying you shouldn't have some money because the scriptures also tell us that money answereth all things. Meaning that if you get sick, you need money to go to the doctor. You need money to pay rent or to buy your house. You need money for food. You need money for transportation. So we need money, okay? But money can't save you, okay? Go ahead. It says, and seeing that all these things gonna be burned up, it says, what type of persons ought we to be? If we know the destruction is gonna happen, what should we be doing now? Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? We ought to be walking, we ought to be having holy conversation like we're doing now and walking in our godliness, which is what? How do you, how do, how do you walk in your godliness? Give me 2 John 6. 2 John 6. Watch this. 2 John, verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. To walk after God means to keep his commandments. It says, walk after his commandments. Go ahead. This is the commandment that, as ye have heard from the beginning. These are the same commandments. Now, this is the New Testament, 2 John. It says, these are the same commandments that we heard from the beginning. Yeah. Meaning, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, there are other laws that are not in the Ten Commandments that we're still supposed to keep. Yeah. I'll give you one. Give me, give me Leviticus 18 and verse 23. Agree or disagree that we still should be, that we should be keeping this law. Because Christianity has taught us, oh, God, laws are done away with. We're now under grace. We are under grace, but we're supposed to still keep the commandments. Grace is just a time period for us to learn who we are, which is the Israelites, to repent and come back to keeping the commandments because we haven't been doing it. Read. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast. So it says we're not supposed to lie down with any beast, meaning animal. Go ahead. To defile thyself therewith. To defile ourselves with. Do y'all agree with that? I tell you, talking about my ex. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you, you crazy. Brother Tony said he thought it was talking about his ex, but it said lying down with a beast. That's funny, bro. So, but this is what I mean. The laws of God is, tells us this is an instruction manual on how we're supposed to live, how we're supposed to deal with each other, and how we're supposed to carry ourselves. Okay? Now, watch this. Go ahead. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there, too. So. Oh, it is confusion. It's confusion. Meaning that you see a lot of times, you see these, you know, people doing things with their dogs. These women doing stuff with horses and donkeys and, okay? Yes. Do you know in Canada, that's actually not illegal? 
They bringing it in. Oh, they bringing it in. It's coming to America. That is common sense. What I'll say this, it's common sense to us. You're you're above the age of 40, right? It's common sense to us. We not they not they not teaching. See, I I'll, I'll give you an example. When we were when we were young, how old are you? My you mind me asking. 50. 52. 52. I'm, I, I'm 48. I'm, I'm close to 40, almost 49. So when we was coming up, we was taught. We were taught the Ten Commandments, directly or indirectly. You had somebody telling you, "Don't you be out there stealing? Don't you be out there doing this? Don't be out there messing with them little girls. Come home with no baby." Okay. We so in directly or indirectly, we were learning the commandments. Nowadays, they're learning. Look, love is love. It doesn't matter if you love a man or if you love a woman. It's all okay. Love is love. We didn't learn that. We learned Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. That's what my mama used to always say. So even though they weren't necessarily keeping the laws, we were still taught what we call good home. The Bible is good. The laws of God is good home training. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 25. So we agree with that law. We shouldn't be defiling ourselves lying down with animals, right? Now watch this. Now some people don't agree with that because some people are doing that. Okay? Now watch this. Does, does rape happen in America? Does it happen in Baltimore? A whole lot, right? Watch this. Now this is the law of God that we're supposed to keep. It's not in the Ten Commandments. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 25. Uh -huh. But if a man find, but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her. So if a man finds a, a, a betrothed, meaning a woman that is promised to another, she's engaged, okay? Now she can be engaged or not engaged, okay? It says if he force her, go ahead. And the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. So that's going into what that's saying is a man's not supposed to rape a woman. We agree with that, right? That's that's it's a these are we and, and for lack of a better word, we call these nigga laws. Meaning that everybody know we're not supposed to do that, but guess what? It still gotta be taught because our people are doing it. Common sense, I'm, don't get me wrong, people do these things. Common sense would be, if I lay down with, if me and sis Gabby were an item and we had children, common sense would be for me to take care, to marry her and to take care of my kids, right? But how many brothers on child support? I was one. I had to have, now, in my case, I didn't have to have somebody tell me to do it. Sometimes the woman go down and she just put you on it. But what I'm saying is we got a lot of brothers that go, uh, they walk away from their responsibility. It's common sense that we're supposed to take care of them, but we still have to teach it because if common sense could change the mind and, 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 and save our people, then our communities wouldn't look like this. So we still got to come out here we can't we can't we cannot do it without the laws of God we've tried to do it on our own we didn't try marching we didn't try voting we didn't try every four years they come and tell us oh oh it's still the same way because you voted for the wrong person they come down to the you don't what are you at now what are you at now we come down here every Saturday we don't see no politicians why because there ain't no race going on right now but as you better bet as soon as the race start heating back up for the next election, where are they going to be? They're going to be down here talking about vote or die. Oh, you got to vote. You got to do it. No. No. The Bible tells us don't vote. It says don't vote. Don't set anybody over you that's not of your nation. We're not supposed to put the other nations over us. That's a curse. Our king is who? Jesus Christ. Our king is Christ. That's right. Our king is Christ. And Christ said, give me that, John 14, 15. These are the laws. See, the thing is this, right? A lot of people say, well, we don't have to keep the laws. But we keep the laws in the land. All of us are free right now. Ain't none of us in prison. So obviously you're keeping some type of laws. Right? Or you just ain't got caught yet. And this is an opportunity for you to repent before you do. Right? Read. John chapter 14, verse 15. Uh -huh. If you love me, so how many people out here say they love Christ? Show of hands. All the brothers in purple love Christ. Christ okay. Said this. What color are those letters, bro? Red. They're red. Meaning Christ said this out of his own mouth. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's that simple. Christ gave commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. What commandments did Christ keep? Give me 1 Peter 2, 2021. 
So Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So we got to keep the same commandments that what? That Christ kept, right? we supposed to be following his footsteps, right? we supposed to be living a Christ-like life. Read. Well, you good, you good. Can I just say this? Yes, please. First Peter's chapter oh, two. Look, we only got we only got ten minutes left. You might as well okay. just stay but, until we finish. But, we got ten minutes. Go on, stay with us, this game. Look, you keeping this, the Sabbath out here, us with, a, but I with us out here right now. To the brothers, yes. I want to say First Peter. Hold on, let me just read one, the scripture. One, Go ahead. One, what you got? Just one second. Say it on the mic. So, all I want to say is that I'm very proud of my brother. Okay. When I was growing up, I was grew up, taught by men. Okay. How to be a lady. That's heavy. So, that's heavy. So, that's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. Read what you got. Ten minutes, it's Gabby, and we and we got we got to all wrap up and go. First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-one. Uh -huh. For even here unto were ye called. So here even unto were ye called, meaning us. Go ahead. Because Christ also suffered for us. Christ suffered for us, right? Who did Christ suffer for? Me. Uh -huh. Meaning who? Who are you? Who are you in the Bible? What do you call? Huh? The Israelites, right? Watch this. Give me Matthew one twenty one. But hold what you. I, I want to go back to that. Go ahead. Matthew one twenty one. Let's show who Christ came for. Because you know some people go, oh, he came for everybody. No, trust me. He's not coming to save the people who took us to slavery. Okay. If you, if your kids, if your kids were kidnapped and taken to the other side of the world, right? And you found out where they were. When you go to save them, are you going to save the abductors with your kids? No. You're going to rescue them from the abductors, right? Go ahead. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Uh -huh. And she shall bring forth a son. She is married. She's going to have a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus, I came. For he shall save his people. Who is he going to save? His people from what? From their sins. Jesus coming to save his people, the Israelites. Jesus was a Jew from the tribe of Jews. Yeah, okay. right. And he's coming to save his people from their sins. And what is it? now I gotta go look. Oh, now I gotta go to Luke. Give me Luke. No, I want uh no no no. I want uh give me Luke 168. So now I gotta go just touch on salvation, because he's gonna save us from our sins, but he's coming to save us from something else too. Read. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Bring it up. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. No, the Lord God of everybody. Of Israel. The Lord God is the God of Israel. He's not everybody's God. That's, that's one of the things our people fail in understanding is that these other nations don't worship the same God that we do. Right. Okay? Half of them, the ones that are keeping Halloween and Christmas up, they serving this man. They serving Caesar Borgia. Okay, this is who they serve. Sunday church, pagan Easter, pagan Christmas. Okay, all of that falls under this man. The God of Israel don't the God of Israel don't do this. We're not doing none of that. We're separate. We're set apart. We're separate. We live in different. We eat in different. We dress in different. Everything about us is different. Yes, but why? Right. Because we're God's chosen people. Right. We're living as such. Meaning, when you see us and how we live, it shouldn't be the same way that the people that's under Him is living. Okay. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, uh -huh. for He hath visited and redeemed His people. No, He redeemed everybody. Redeem his people. He's going to redeem his people. Go ahead. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. The horn of salvation is Christ. Christ came through the lineage of King David. Go ahead. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Meaning what we're doing out here now, the prophets have been doing since the beginning. They've been coming out and prophesying to the people about the coming of Christ and now about the coming of Christ's second coming. Okay? They've been doing this since the beginning. Go ahead. That we should be saved. That, that we should be saved from what? From our enemies. Uh-oh. From who? We're going to be... Hold on, wait. I thought they was going to be saved with us. I thought he was saving everybody. It says that we should be saved from our enemies. Go ahead. And from the hand of all that hate us. When something is at hand, it means you possess it. We're going to be saved from the people who brought us over here and did this to us. That's what it's talking about, our enemies. But we think that that's our friends. Because somebody gives you a job does not make them your friend. It makes you their servant. Right. 
You understand? No matter how good the job is. Okay, LeBron James is a servant. He's just a high class servant. He a high paid servant. Okay? We have, we got to get this mindset out of our head that we are somehow or even want to be equal with the other nations. The Bible says that we are above them. So in order to be equal, that means we got to come down to their level. We have stooped down to their level and even below it. Now we're worse than they are. We're worse than they are. When you when you go to the when you go to the ATM, says says um, it's Gabby, says Gabby. We go to the ATM. You're not looking over your shoulder for no white guy to run up on you and rob you. You're looking for one of these little dudes with their pants around their knees, okay, with a with a blunt behind his ear, with some with some little yachty pumping, and you know out his headphones. That's gonna run up and put a gun in your back. We've become worse than the people that brought us that did this to us. And it's only one way back. It's only one way back. And that's unfortunate that we got to be worried about our own people. It shouldn't be that way. That's why the scriptures say we got to gather ourselves together. We have to unify. But it's only one way that we can unify. Now, think about this, right? Say me. What's your name, brother? Huh? Charles. Charles. Say me and brother Charles own a business, right? How can we own a business if I'm a thief and he's an adulterer? So the whole time we trying to own this business, I'm trying to steal money from the company and he's trying to sleep with my wife. How are we going to be unified? Give me that name on three and three. Give me name on three and three. So another force to be unified, it means we got to believe the same thing. Our people have to believe the same thing. We can't be in 45 different denominations of Christianity, in Islam, in Buddhism, Seven Day Adventists, uh, 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 Jehovah's Witnesses, all these different things, but we only got one Bible. So who's teaching the truth? There's only one truth. We're going to get that next. Go ahead. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Uh -huh. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Said, can two walk together? Can me and can me and brother Charles walk together except we agree? Meaning, we said we believe the same thing. No, because we gonna always have those fundamental differences. Because he gonna say, nah, we ought to do it this way, and I'm gonna say, nah, we ought to do it that way. When the truth is, how we ought to do it is according to the scriptures. That's right. Okay, give me that Proverbs 13, 18, one of my favorite scriptures. Okay, it really describes the condition of our people that's going on down here. Proverbs 13, 18. And look, I done got all the way from uh, Second Peter. We gonna get back though. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18. Uh -huh. Poverty and shame. Do you think poverty and shame is a condition of what's going on down there? This is a shameful condition. When I see my brothers, when I see my brothers like this, that's shameful, man. That's shameful. Okay, I would would you want I, if I was if I was in that lifestyle, I wouldn't want my kids to see me like that. That's because it's shameful. Okay? It's shameful. It's shameful for a man to be laying down with another man. It's shameful for a brother to have six, seven, eight, nine, ten kids by five, six, seven different other women and not taking care of none of them. That's shameful. Okay? It's shameful for uh, somebody to have to tell me it's Mother's Day, do something nice for your mother. We ain't supposed to celebrate Mother's Day. But if the only time I'm doing something is when a white man says it's Mother's Day, do something for your mother, I'm a horrible son. Because I'm supposed to honor my mother and father every day. Right. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Go ahead, what's that, Amos 3 and 3? Give it. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. And that's how we got in the condition. It says poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth the instruction. What's the instruction, says Gammy? It's the Bible. It's the Bible. Now, let me give you something. Give me Deuteronomy 24 5. Yep, right on time. Let me give you something, says Gammy. And I don't know if you heard this before, but now we agree with we agree with Leviticus 18.23 that we're not supposed to lay down with animals, right? That's right. We agree with Deuteronomy 22.25 that a woman man is not supposed to be raping no women, right? That's right. Listen to this scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 uh -huh. The woman So since gave me this is talking about you in this first part It says the woman Shall not wear Hold on we're going to take it slow The woman shall not That's a commandment right The woman shall not Wear Wear means to what? To put on right? The woman shall not put on That 
which pertaineth, what means pertaineth? Pertaineth mean? It means belong to. The woman shall not put on what belongs to unto a man. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So, brother back here, I know you listen. You've been listening. What's a woman's garment? A dress, right? So, oh, oh, what belongs to women is dresses and skirts, right? right. So, what belongs to men? And shorts. Pants and shorts belong to men. So, as your brother, and out of love, out of God's word, I'm telling you, you're supposed to wear a dress, right? Women are supposed to wear dresses. Men are supposed to wear pants. Now, because we've been doing that for a while, it's socially accepted. But that was never our custom. Even if you look down here in slavery, even in slavery, our sisters had on, they all got on dresses. And it's supposed and to be, and not supposed to be no skin tight dress, it's supposed to be a modest dress, like I, I said know. in First Timothy 2, right? Modest apparel, meaning when a woman is dressed modestly, modest means not attracting sexual attention. Exactly. Yeah, only your husband is supposed to, that's supposed to be covered up and revealed for your husband, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay, and then let me get, uh, my, bro my brother got the beard already. Okay, let me give me uh, Leviticus 13 and 30. Go, Leviticus 13 and 30. Let me give you one more. Okay. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. Uh -huh. Then the priest shall see the plague. So we're talking about a plague. A plague is a disease, right? Uh -huh. Right? And behold, if it be in the sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair. What do we call yellow hair today? Blonde. Blonde, right? Blonde. Oh, there it is, right? So blonde is actually a, a French word that means yellow. Okay, go ahead. So it says, if there be any, a blonde hair, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. Blonde hair is unclean. Mm -hmm. It belongs to the same people that brought us over here in slavery. Mm -hmm. Give me Proverbs 331. Proverbs 331. Watch this. Proverbs 331. Because the way he made you is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Our woolly hair, our natural hair is beautiful. Now we can have braids, we can do all of that. But don't take that blonde out. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Uh -huh. Envy thou not the oppressor. So don't envy or don't covet the things that the person that brought you over here in slavery. Mm -hmm. It says, don't go after the things that he has. Mm -hmm. The blonde hair, mm -hmm. the celebrating of Halloween, the celebrating of Christmas, all those things that he has, that's not for us. It says, envy not the oppressor and do what? And choose none of his ways. Don't choose his ways. Same thing is said in Revelation 18:4. Come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. We got to come back to this Bible. We got to repent and start keeping our ways, our customs, which is written right here. It's the instruction manual. Right? We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.